Howdy doody buckaroonies, and welcome back to another episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron. Today, I wanted to answer one of the most popular questions I get asked on this channel. Hey bro, what DAW is that? This is probably second to only, is that your real voice? To which the obvious answer is no. I actually hire a professional voice actor to overdub every single one of my videos word for word because my normal speaking voice is actually too low for human hearing. It's a pretty rare medical condition, and to be honest, I'm a little bit sensitive about it. So, I use a DAW called Bitwig Studio, and to be honest, Bitwig took me by a bit of a surprise, especially being a longtime Cubase user and coming from a background of things like Cubase and Pro Tools. In the past, I had tried things like FL Studio and it just made absolutely no sense to me. I couldn't figure it out whatsoever. And then of course I tried Ableton. I tried to get into it and I just couldn't get things going and I couldn't really use it as a DAW for whatever reason. I got a hold of Bitwig through a client project and I was really, really shocked at how much I liked it. And I think that's largely thanks to its fast and intuitive workflow and its ridiculously cool feature set. Bitwig quickly became my go-to DAW for both my music and my sound design work, which was kind of surprising. I use a lot of different DAWs and audio programs for what I do because some things simply do things better than others. They do things that others don't, or they do things in maybe just a more efficient way or at least efficient to me way that I use that program to do that one specific thing. But I think what continuously keeps me coming back to Bitwig is the fact that to me, it feels like an extension of the creative process and is kind of an instrument in and of itself, which is really inspiring. I know a lot of you are curious about Bitwig or are even considering making the switch over to Bitwig. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you 15 things I wish someone told me when I first started using Bitwig because I was too dumb to figure them out on my own. If you want to try out Bitwig or you're thinking about picking it up, you can also use my affiliate link down in the description below. It does help out the channel so I can make more videos like this one and you get Bitwig. So it's kind of a win-win for both of us. All right, so we're going to cover 15 obvious and maybe not so obvious things that I think you need to know to get started using Bitwig Studio. First up, how do I set my audio interface? Well, we're going to go up to the little Bitwig ding ding rooney right up here. We can go over to settings. Then we can go to the audio tab here. You can select your driver, your interface, and set up your inputs and outputs. So if you have your audio interface set up, but you're not seeing the inputs or you want to change them, in my case, it only seemed to recognize the first pair of stereo inputs. I could just manually add in stuff here. So I can add mono and stereo buses. You can also add output buses as well as needed. So this is a great way to get everything set up and ready to rock and roll or dubstep or future bass or whatever you kids are doing nowadays. Next up, setting up your own custom shortcuts. I think this is a really important feature and I'm very glad that Bitwig makes this super simple to do. Like I mentioned, I came from a background of Cubase for many moons, so the Cubase shortcuts are kind of permanently burned into my memory and I find myself naturally trying to use them no matter what DAW I'm using. So I ended up just importing a bunch of the Cubase shortcuts here into Bitwig. To do this yourself, if you have shortcuts that you prefer to use, you can go up to the little Bitwig doodad at the top once again, go over to settings and then go to shortcuts. Here you can click something and then enter a new shortcut. So if I want to save as template, for example, I click the plus and let's do control alt S and then hit add. Boom, done. And if you want to take it away, you can just delete it and you can even assign multiple shortcuts per action if for some reason you wanted to do that. Another handy thing to know about in this menu, if you have some kind of controller you want to use to control your DAW, whether that's like touch DAW or some app or whatever, you can go over to the controller tab here and do the same thing. So we can add a shortcut using our controller and punch something in. Like let's say I want to hit this pad on my drum pad and I can do MIDI keyboard B3 to save as a template. So that's another cool thing to know about. Next up, let's talk about the two different views that you get in Bitwig to work with. Here we have the arrangement window or the linear window, whatever you want to call it. So this works like most other DAWs. It goes from left to right. You can scroll up and down, and that is your song from start to end. But if you prefer to work more in a loopy format, you can hit tab and jump over here to the clip launcher or pad view or whatever you want to call it. So this is a pretty handy thing to know about, and you can actually even have both of these views up at the same time. If we click this little pad icon here, and now we've got our little loops over on that side and our arrangement window over on this side. Normally, I'm personally not very big on these like looper view things, and I don't really use that workflow much myself, but it is something that I really like about Bitwig because it does a couple of interesting things. So if I'm stuck for an idea, for example, what I could do is go over here and grab one of these clips and move it into this window and grab this clip and put it here, and then maybe take this clip and put it up here. 
Now, let's say I'm working on this track and just trying to figure out maybe a couple of new ideas. I could start moving these clips and rearranging them a bit. So let's say this lead goes here and then let's do kind of a new scene here, bring in some bass and whatever, bring this layer back up and maybe something like that. So I can start playing these and get an idea of how they sound. And if I like that, I could start dragging this by the entire scene. So I can click and drag scene at the top here and just drag this right over into the arranger window or the timeline view or whatever you want to call it. And it's put that in there. And now let's say I liked this set of loops and want that to be my drop. I could just click and drag and move it right on over, which is a really, really awesome way to work. Like most other loop and arrangement views and whatever, you can click to launch a clip, you could play entire scenes, you can do all that kind of stuff. And of course, you can record live into these as well. So we could arm this for the input and start recording a clip right into it. So we can even do live improv things right inside of here, which is something I like to play with as well. I might take a section of my track, put it in a scene, and then start layering a lead on top or something and experimenting with ideas. And then once I'm happy with it, drag it from there into the arrangement window and we're done. And I've created a section for my track. Next up, let's talk about some cool devices you should know about. Bitwig comes with a lot of interesting devices. If we open up our effects down here, go to Bitwig, we can see we've got 54 different devices, but I think there are some that really stand out. First off, let's talk about the delay, because I think this has a pretty neat feature. As you would expect, this is a typical delay, so without it, and with it, Hooray. But one of the neat things is we can click in this feedback effects area and start adding effects into the feedback path. So let's just grab the native Bitwig pitch shifter and tune this up an octave. So now it's going to create kind of a shimmer echo. Which is a little gross and weird, but what's cool is this can be anything. So I can even add third party plugins, like let's say this reverb plugin. So I want to have a shimmer verb inside of my delay, and I can do that. And I think that's actually kind of cool. Now, this goes beyond that as well. If we hop over to something like the delay four, we actually get four different delay taps. We have a feedback network. We can start feeding the delays back into each other to create really complex delay effects. And each of those has an individual feedback effects insert path. So you could have four different delays with four different times that all feed into each other with four individual feedback effects chains of stuff. And this can be literally anything and you can even be multiband or parallel which is super easy to do in bitwig like if i grabbed this soft amp uh, psa i can hit Control g group that together and add another layer to it maybe this blur and then blend it in parallel or do a multiband chain per delay tap feedback loop or Whatever, it's it's just wild. And I think that's a really cool thing to experiment with. Bitwig's reverb also does the same thing. So we have the reverb here, so we can go into the tank effects and the wet effects. So we can actually put something in the feedback loop of the reverb to create our own shimmer reverb or like a bit crushed reverb or whatever, or the wet effects. We could just add something into the reverb effects chain to further process it before it spits out the other end. And I think that is a pretty fun thing to try. A really cool synth inside of Bitwig that you should check out is Polymer. And it may not look that interesting or complicated here at first glance, but it's got some cool features up its sleeve. So we can select an oscillator type. We've got pulse, sawtooth, sine, triangle, wavetable, phase, and swarm. You can even import your own wavetables. We've got multiple filters to choose from. There's a couple of different envelope options. Now, what's really interesting is we can actually right click this and then convert it to a poly grid, which means it converts that instrument into a grid instrument. And now we've got a fully modular synth that we can kind of design from as a starting point. So we've got the pulse oscillator. Maybe we want to add in a phase distortion or something. You can build your own synth right inside of Bitwig. With that in mind, if you wanted to build something with like three wavetable oscillators or something along those lines, or maybe something that had a wavetable and a granular layer and whatever, you can do that. And I think that's a pretty powerful thing that I will maybe try and cover in a future video because the grid does get kind of complicated, but it is very, very cool. Another really important device I think you should know about is multiband FX2 and multiband FX3. So these are multiband effects right inside of Bitwig. So within here, we've got an individual low, mid, and high band. So we can click the low band, and then in this area, we could add an effect, like let's maybe do an EQ. We can click the mid band, and now we've got a separate thing for that. Let's grab a 
distortion and the high band, we could do a separate thing for that. Let's grab the ring mod because the ring mod is kind of cool. And now we've created a band split chain for this device. And it's super, super fast to do and really, really easy. And I really like that. But what's fun is you can do anything within this. So it's kind of like having something sort of similar to Kill a Heart to Multipass built right into the DAW. Device racks are also really nice. So as I showed earlier, you can hit Control G and start to build your own device rack. So now we've got a multiband first, and then we could add something like maybe the Arturia Reverb after that, and then we could add maybe a uh, kilohertz faturator after that or something along those lines and now we've built a quick effects layer and what's cool is we can control the gain of this as well as the mix so it's very quick to create complex parallel processing chains within this we can also do a second layer so we could go in and do a chorus below that and then have another chain we could do a comb filter below that and have another chain and as far as i'm aware you can do this forever and ever and ever and have unlimited stacks of effects or effects processing chains inside of these which is pretty neat this idea is also useful for instruments and stuff as well so if we have one instrument track we could take the instrument control g and start creating a multi-layered instrument so i could grab maybe surge below that and we could put something else like the ca2600 and then an instance of vital below that. So now we've got four instruments inside of one instrument rack layer, but what's neat is we can also do per chain processing on this. So we've got the poly grid here and I could add in a Chow matrix on that, but then on this instance of surge, I could add a Melda wave shaper and keep going Again, as far as I'm aware, forever and ever and ever until your computer runs out of power, which is ridiculously powerful for sound design. One thing that took me a bit longer than I'd like to admit to figure out is how to access presets for a device. So let's say something like phase four here. This is a really cool synth, but it might not be super obvious as to how you would get a sound out of it. To access the device presets, you can click the folder icon on the device and up we go with a bunch of different presets here. So we could click one of these and bring it in. We could even do something like a preset for the grid. Let's grab a FX grid and now click the presets there and we could pull up a, oh, how about a reverb inside of the FX grid? And then we could go in and build our own reverb inside of the grid and then come back and grab a multiband FX3 and find the infamous OTT preset right there inside a Bitwig. So that's a really easy way to pull up presets and get an idea of how these devices work and what you can do with them. One thing you might notice here is these little device macros. And you might be wondering, how do I do that? And how do I make stuff to have controls? This is actually pretty simple. Let's grab a PSP micro warmer, for example. Now we can add controls to this by clicking this little grid icon here that opens up these remote controls. Now we can go to this edit window and start adding stuff. So we can go here, add in a page, Let's add in a parameter. Let's maybe do, I guess, the speed. Now we've learned that, we can save and apply, and away we go. So now we can control the speed, just like that. And this can be applied to just about anything. Let's grab an instance of Serum, I guess, because why not? And then we can add a macro for that. So let's go into the remote controls, configure this, let's go in and assign something. So let's go into Serum here and add the wavetable position. And then let's do the level of oscillator B. Save and apply and away we go. We've now got device macros and we can apply this to anything that can be automated within that plugin or device. Another really powerful feature of Bitwig and one of the big draws for me is the modulators. And I think this is one of the big selling points that people talk about a lot. So how do we do modulators and what are they good for? To start adding modulators, you can click this little show modulators button here and this will bring up these little plus icons and we can start bringing in modulators. So I'm gonna bring in an XY controller. Now we can click this and start learning it to some stuff. Let's learn parameter X to oscillator one's volume and we'll just increase the amount there. Let's learn Y to oscillator 2's volume and increase the amount there. Now, if we start wiggling the XY controller, we will start to have movement in Dune. Hooray, look at that go. Now, what's really fun is these modulators are actually pretty open-ended. Let's grab a random. Now, I'm going to use this random to control my modulators. So I'm gonna send the output of this by clicking here and clicking the X control and just increasing the depth of that modulation. So now what's going to happen is it's going to start moving around the X. 
Now let's set this to be bipolar. And if we take a look, we've got this wiggling on around the X here. Let's drop the random amount down. Now that's pretty neat. Let's grab another random here and assign that to the Y axis. So let's grab this random, smooth it out, go back here and target the output of this random to the Y position and make it bipolar. And now once again, we've got a bunch of movement going on for Dune here. Now with both of those assigned, we can see Dune is all wiggly jiggly and the XY is going crazy. And now if I hold down a note, We've got tons of modulation going on and it's really, really fun to experiment with these. There are a lot of different modulators to choose from. You can even do things like having an audio input start targeting modulation. We've got step sequencers, we've got vector things, we've got ADSRs, we've got key tracking effects, LFOs, math things. So we can use modulators and start doing math with them to output maybe the sum or something and create new modulation. And I think you get the idea. It's incredibly powerful and a great way to waste an afternoon just experimenting with ridiculous modulation chains. Next up, how do I start side chaining things? If you want to add a side chain inside a Bitwig, it's pretty simple. Let's grab something like the Bitwig Dynamics device and we'll use this to create a side chain. So we see we have a side chain input here. We can click that and select our side chain signal. Let's do the output of the drum machine, kick, pre-fader, and ta-da, we've now set up the side chain in Bitwig and this will start ducking out of the way. Cool. Now that's nice and easy, but you might not see that in every single device here. So for instance, with Slice EQ, it does have a sidechain input, but it doesn't have that same interface as the Dynamics device. To access that, you'll see this little thing here, which is the sidechain input for the plugin. Now this will appear only if the plugin supports a sidechain input. So the idea here being, if you know it has a sidechain, but you don't see a sidechain little window, this is how you do that. So we'll click that, and then we can select our source. Let's do the drum machine kick once again, and now we've got slice EQ with the sidechain signal coming in from the kick drum. Next up, how do I quantize stuff? This took me a minute to figure out. Let's click on this MIDI clip here. We'll bring it up by double clicking. So once we've got that selected, we can go up here to the top and go to quantize. If you don't see that, you can hold down clip here and then you can pin the quantize menu with the little pin right there, as well as a couple other handy functions you might need like doubling or having the scale and bouncing things and stuff like that. Once we've selected a clip, you can click quantize, enter your quantized, you can humanize, you can add shuffle, you get the idea. Or if you want to be a little lazier like I am, I just added a Q to quantize as the macro so I can just hit Q and boop, my clip is now quantized. On the note of quantization, you might be wondering, how do I add swing to stuff? So within the quantize menu, we can actually add shuffle there, but another quick way to enable this for all of your clips is to go to the top here, and then you'll see this global shuffle button. So if we click that, it's going to automatically enable shuffle for everything in your project. So once we've got that set up, we can go into play here, and then we've got control for our shuffle amount. So we've got the shuffle right here, we can start increasing that. And this applies a global shuffle to everything in your project that can be quantized. So that's a really handy thing to know about. Let's talk about automation because automation is super important. Bitwig makes this pretty simple. And one thing I really like about it is how fast it is. So Dune, for instance, has a gajillion different parameters. Let's bring Dune open here and let's grab this filter. So if I wiggle this filter, we'll see that nothing happens. So to open the automation lanes, we need to click this little hamburger menu here. Now what's neat is whenever you move a parameter, Bitwig will automatically switch it over to that. This makes automating stuff super simple. So let's say I had a part here and I want the filter to open up over time. I just wiggle the filter, it's at filter cutoff, and up it goes. Now let's say I wanted to wiggle the resonance over time. I'll click resonance and it goes away, but we'll see it's now targeting resonance. Let's say it does something about like that. We could hold alt and adjust the curve if we want to. We could add in some more points. We could even highlight and copy and paste and bring that in and away we go. Now to see all of these, we can click this little star dude and that's gonna open up all the automation used for that track and ta-da, you have now automated your clips and stuff. Another important thing to know about in Bitwig, how do I access the individual outputs of a multi-output plugin to add processing to them? This is something that took me a little bit to figure out, so I'm gonna walk you through that now. Here, I've got an instance of UVI Falcon. It's got three layers. Each of these goes to a different output. If we close that and take a look here in Bitwig, we'll see we have Falcon and it's just one channel and there's not really an immediate 
immediate way to access those individual outputs. But to do this, it's pretty straightforward. We'll go to the bottom and click the device panel. Then within the device, we'll see we have these two little arrows. If we click that, we can add the individual chain. So I'm gonna add one for each of those. Now, if I give this a play, we'll see that each layer comes out on its own individual channel. So we could click one of these to add a effect, like let's say, a uh, relay on that and then I want to add a reverb on that one and then I want to add a delay on this one. Now away we go with our individual processing chains for the individual outputs of that plugin. Ta-da! Next up, what is the grid and how do I use it? The grid is probably one of the bigger draws to Bitwig outside of the modulators, and it's a pretty complicated thing that I think I'd like to do a more detailed video on in the future, but I'm just not sure if there's enough interest in that. If you'd be interested in that, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, though, be sure to go check out Polarity on YouTube. He's one of my favorite channels for this kind of stuff, and he does some really excellent videos showing some ideas and things you can do with the grid. So we have Polygrid and FX Grid, and these are two different things, but essentially they're both modular environments to build either an instrument or an effect. Let's open up Polygrid here and just create a super basic instrument. It's going to start out with a little triangle wave and we get that, hooray us. Now let's go in and add another oscillator, like let's say a sine oscillator and we'll put the output of that into the phase input here and we could start creating a phase distortion synthesizer. From here, you can expand on this idea in many different ways. We could add sub oscillators, we can add random modifiers, we can add more envelopes, we can add filters, we can add wave shapers, we can do all sorts of crazy stuff. But the polygrid is just an instrument environment and this can do everything from simple synthesizers to very complicated generative music things. It's really cool stuff. So effects grid works in much the same way. We have an audio in and an audio out and anything between those two points is entirely up to you. So we could go through here and flip through a couple of presets. Here is a glitch machine, which adds glitchy stuff. Here is a reverb, which is built entirely in the grid. So you can build your own reverbs right inside of here. We've got a octave shifting effect. And I think you get the idea. It's very complicated stuff, but it's super fun. It's almost similar to reactor in a way, just not quite as deep, but it is very interesting. And I think even taking some presets and just tweaking a couple things or adding some more modules can yield some very interesting results. The last thing I wanted to show here is how do I use hardware in Bitwig? And this was something that took me a minute to find out. So let's add a new instrument track. And within here, we can type in hardware. We've got a hardware CV instrument or a hardware instrument. So yes, Bitwig can actually interface with modular gear, which is super cool. Now, unfortunately, I'm not cool enough to have a Euro rack set up or anything. So I'm gonna add a traditional hardware instrument here. Now, all we need to do is set our MIDI output. So the Arteria MIDI out and the return, which is going to be stereo 2 which is where that's feeding into on my interface now from here we could play this and we could add effects to it and all that but you might be wondering how do I get this into audio because obviously I can't leave my hardware synth plugged in all the time forever and ever so what I will do is I'll create the hardware instrument here write my MIDI part and then add an audio track and set the input as stereo in 2 and record it out and then I've got my audio printed in and I've used my hardware inside of the DAW so Hooray, that's, uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. And so I think that wraps up my kind of crash course here on 15 things I think you should know how to do in Bitwig in order to get your money's worth out of it and start making some awesome stuff. Bitwig is a whole lot of fun and there's a lot more to it. So if you'd be interested in maybe some more Bitwig beginner tutorials in the future, let me know down in the comments. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want to try out Bitwig for yourself, you can use my affiliate link down in the description below. I get a small kickback, so it's a great way to support the channel and get a hold of a copy of Bitwig for yourself. And this video is in no way sponsored or endorsed by Bitwig. I just really like Bitwig and think that people should check it out. That wraps everything up for this one. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome, but with Bitwig. Be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys again soon.